Next, I want to create the screw clearance washer. And so I'll go to the top level, I'll right click, I'll create a new component, and I'm going to call this screw clearance washer. And I'm going to isolate that component. So I'll right click, I'll do isolate. I'm going to go to the right side view and I will start a new sketch on the YZ plane. And I'm going to get a circle at the origin. I'll make this circle 0.516 and I'll do a second circle at the origin and I'll make this circle 0.75. I'm then going to do extrude of these two, and I'll select the area in between the two circles. I'm going to extrude that a distance of 0.375. I'm going to put a fillet on this edge. So I'll do fillet, I'll select that edge, and I'll do that as 0.03. And I'll turn off the origin, put an appearance on that body. So let's go to our appearances. I'm gonna put a chrome appearance on this. Save everything. I'll undo the isolate and so now we have this component is down here now I want to put these two components into a subassembly and so I'm going to create a new component and I'm going to call this screw subassembly and then I'm going to drag and drop the screw washer into that subassembly and I'm going to get this screw clearance rivet get that into the subassembly Okay, so now I have these two components in this subassembly. Let's right click and isolate. So I have these two components in here. I'm going to ground this component. Uh, that's this one. And if I go to the origin, so the origin of my subassembly is at that location. So that's in position. So I'm going to ground that in that position. And then I'm going to mate this part to this part. So I'll go to joint and I'll go ahead and capture position. And I'm going to select the center of this face. I want that at the center of this face. And I can leave that as a revolute or I could put that as a rigid joint. I'll just go ahead and leave it the way it is. And so we see that that component is now mated against this component and I'll start to work on the, the next component. So I'm going to create a component within this subassembly. So I'll right click on this subassembly. I'll tell it to create component and I'm going to name this component screw and I will isolate the screw. So I'll right click, I'll do isolate. So our screen is clear. So we can start to work on this without any obscure geometry. I will start a new sketch on the XZ plane and I will then draw a rectangle from the origin going over to the left. I'll draw another rectangle from the origin going up and then I'm going to to dimension the length of this rectangle from here over to here and that length is 14.875. I'll dimension the diameter. Pick this line first then this line. Right click do diameter and I'll put in 0.5. I will dimension the width of this as 0.125 and I'll dimension the diameter from this line up to this line. Right click tell it diameter and for that diameter 0.825. I'll finish that sketch. I will revolve these two rectangles. So I'll do revolve and I'll select this rectangle and I'll select this rectangle. I see that I have a joint glyph visible. I'll turn those off in here in a second. So I'll do around the x-axis. We'll say okay. Let's come up here to the joints and hide those. Okay. Then I'm going to do a new sketch on this face right here. So I'll do a sketch. I'll select this face. Let's go to the right side view. I'm going to do a polygon and so I'll do a polygon and I'll, I'll select about like that and then I'm going to make one of these lines vertical and so I'll do vertical and I'll select this line and I'll dimension this distance from here to here as 0.625. I'll then extrude that and I'll extrude that out a distance of 0.5. I'll go back around and I was going to put a hole in here, but I think I'll do a chamfer on the end of this first. And so let's do a new sketch on this face. And so I'll, I'll do a sketch. And I'm going to draw a circle from here. And I want it tangent to this edge. And so I'll do tangent. I'll select that edge. Select a circle. That circle turns black. And then I will do extrude. And I'll select this circle. And I'm going to go through the part. But I want to do intersection instead of cut. And I want to 
tell it to go through all and I want to do a taper angle of 60 degrees. I'll say okay to that. So that puts this chamfer on the edge of it. And the other way we could have done this is we could have drawn a triangle in here and then revolve cut that triangle. But it was easier to do that as a circle and just extrude the circle. I then want to put a, a hole through here so I'll uh, select this face. I'll do a, a sketch on that face. And I want the hole to be halfway in between here and here. So I'll do P for project and I'll project this line and this point. I'll draw a line from the midpoint here over to this point. Change all of that to construction and then I'll draw a circle at the midpoint of that line and we'll do that circle as a diameter 0.26 and then I'll do extrude cut to help to go through all. I want to go symmetric so we have that hole. And then going to do a new sketch on the XZ plane and let's look directly at this one. And I will draw a center point rectangle or I could do it as a two point rectangle um, over here about like this and then I'll draw a line from the midpoint of this rectangle over to the origin and I may want to see into my model as I'm doing this and so I'm going to click here for slice that will slice my model in half I'm not sure whether that makes it easier or harder to see I think maybe it makes it harder and I want this line though to be construction so I'll change that to construction and I want it to be horizontal and I could turn off the body uh, maybe that will make it easier to see for the time being I'll dimension the distance from this line back to the origin as 1.01 and then I'm going to dimension the distance from here to here as 0.2 and I will dimension the length of this line as 0.3 I'm going to draw another rectangle up here and one down here. So I will draw a rectangle up here and I'll draw one down here. Now I'll have to drag this point over to here and drag this point over to here. I'm going to change these lines to construction and I'm going to change this line and this line to construction. I'll then do an arc from this point over to here and I'll put that about like that. I'll draw arc from here over to here. I'll make those two arcs equal radius so I'll select those two arcs to make those equal radius I will dimension one of these arcs as 0.2875 and then I want the midpoint of this arc to be on this line so I'll do coincident one point of this onto that line and or the center point of this arc onto that line now everything turns black it's all fully constrained I'll finish sketch I'll turn the visibility of my body back on. I'm going to do extrude and I'll select this area and I'll select this area and I'm going to tell it to do a cut distances through all. So we've cut those two areas out. I'll make that sketch visible again and I'm going to do extrude again. This time I'm going to select these two areas and instead of cut I'm going to do join this time and so I'll go up a distance of 0.05 it's actually the number is negative 0.05. We'll say okay to that. I'll turn off the visibility of that sketch. And so then I'm going to put some fillets in here. So I'll select this edge. I'll right click and I'll do fillet. And I'll also get this edge and the same two edges over on the other side. This edge and this edge. I'll do that fillet radius as 0.025. And then I'm going to select this edge for a fillet. I'll right click. I'll do fillet. And I'll get the same edge on the bottom over here and we'll do those as 0.05 and it doesn't want me to do 0.05 so let's try to do 0.025 and let's try 0.035 and it looks like it's if it gets out here to this edge but I'm just curious so I'm going to go back before I put these two fillets in and see if I can do 0.05 if I did it in a different order and so by doing the fillets in a different order, I was able to put in the 0.05 that I wanted. And then I'll put these two fillets in. And now I'm going to fillet this edge right here. So I will do fillet and I'll select this edge and the corresponding edge over on the other side. And I'll do those as 0.015. Okay, so I put this fillet along that edge. I'm going to put the screw on here next or the thread. So I'm going to go to thread feature. I will put it as a Acme screw thread and I will select this cylinder. It picks up automatically that it's half inch size and then I don't want it to go the entire length and so I'm going to uncheck full length and I'll tell it that 
I want to go 11 inches. Now it tells me that it's having an issue uh, doing that and so I'm going to do this a different way then. So I'll go back to the front view or the top view either one and I'm going to do a new sketch on this XZ plane and I'll draw a line here the length of it doesn't really matter although I might want to make it make sure that it's always bigger than my cylinder so I'll go ahead and put it in a one inch dimension I'm going to dimension the distance from here to the end and I'll need to project that so I'll do P for project I'll select that end and then I'll dimension the distance from here over to this line as 11 inches and I'll put a horizontal constraint so let's put a midpoint right here and then I'll do uh, also put a midpoint here and I'll do horizontal between this point and this point everything turns black it's all fully defined all right then I'm going to split this face using this line so I'll do uh, split I want to do split face not split body so I'll do split face I'll select this face to split and then for the splitting tool I'll select this line and so now we see this is one face and this is a second face let's try putting in that thread again so go to thread I will select this edge and make sure that it's on Acme screw one half and we'll say okay to that I'm going to put a chamfer on here so I'll select this edge I will do my chamfer and I'll do that I'm going to put in initially 0.05 and then I'm going to change this to a model thread. So we need to get that circular edge with the chamfer before we change this to a model thread. I might make that chamfer a little bit bigger. And so I'll edit that feature and let's do 0.075. So I have now a lead in on this thread right here. Now the thread comes to a, a dead stop here. That in the real world this wouldn't be possible. But I'm not going to take the time in to do a lead out on this end it would be a lot of extra work to do that that lead out of the thread so we'll just leave it the way it is I will turn on the visibility of my other components and then if I move this thread I want this circle right here to be up against that circle so I'll do joint then do the center of this circle to the center of this circle and it would be able to rotate I'm trying to decide whether I want to leave that as rotation or not for now I'll go ahead and accept that and if we go back to our main assembly if I turn on all the other components that we see that we have this sub assembly and we will join it up here but before I do that I also want to create the handle that goes through here 